Adventure Cowboy. Howdy, I've been following you for a long time, but this is the first time I've been able to join your live stream. Glad to be here. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad you're here too. I, I'm not real good at this. I, I, I like to do it because it's fun to be able to talk to everybody and kind of uh, make it a little more personal, I guess. Okay, Troy Hester, you're loud and clear over on the western slope. Lands in Colorado. All right. What's the temperature like up there, Troy? Is it cool? Because here, out in my kennels today, it was 112 degrees, and that's under the shade. Terrible, terrible heat. I mean, and we've had, I think we've had 30-something days of over 100 degree weather. Woo. Armando Mada from Tucson, Arizona. I bet it's hot over there in Tucson. 48 folks here. That's pretty cool. Okay. Something I wanted to do today is uh, I got these water bottles. So at some point i'm going to give one of these away maybe two maybe three i got eight of them so for all especially all you got you know i got a membership on my channel and i got a lot of guys that support me through the membership and then i have a patreon and i i just can't keep track of everything it's 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 been about all I can do to to just get these videos out, and then I have that other channel where we, I just kind of kind of play around with the interviews, and then and then we go live on that other channel with a few other guys on uh, on on Monday nights, or we try to. Cameron Coleman, I Brett, glad to be able to tune in again. Glad you're here, Cameron. Everybody who thinks wants to try to win one of these fancy little water bottles, say yes in the in the comments. So, I'm going to pull up the comments now, or the questions. My first question comes from Keith Shaw, and it's, where do you get your mules? I, I've only, I've got four, I've had five, six mules, seven mules, excuse me. And old Jet Johnson and uh, Jenny Johnson were my first two mules. And those two... I'd never been around mules before in my life, but I had, I had, I've rode horses, showed horses, roped on, on horses. Uh, my dad, I was raised on a court horse ranch. My dad, uh, oh, when I was a kid, we had a bunch of brood mares and, and I rode and I showed and then I, I got out of it for a while. And then I, when I got back, I roped a lot. I went and roped everywhere. And, uh, I've told this story before, if you've heard it, but, I was hunting on a ranch over here, uh, a good friend of mine's, and I was on a real nice roping horse I had, and uh, the, the man who had the ranch is Mr. Hyatt, and uh, we were talking, I was coming out, and he asked me where I, where I went and everything I explained to him, and he told me, he said, you know, he said, you, the way you hunt, he said, you should think about getting a mule or two, he said, uh, and he said, get a good one, don't mess around with any bad ones. And it's really kind of a funny story. I was in business for myself, and I'd had a company that owed me a bunch of money for, shoot, they'd owed me this money for about three years. And I say a bunch of money. It was a bunch of money to me. It was like thirty five, forty thousand 40,000 bucks. And me and my wife were driving down the road, and I told her, I said, you know, if, those, if, if, if they pay me in the next few weeks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy me a couple mules. And... Uh, a friend of mine, David Heiss, had, had told me about a couple of mules that were for sale. And uh, I went and checked the mail that very day. And I had a check from that company after three years. And I told my wife, I said, man, that's a sign. So that afternoon, I loaded up and I went and bought those mules. And that was my old Jet Johnson mule. This is my old Jet Johnson mule. And, and Jenny, I call her Jenny, Jenny Johnson. That's my Jenny mule, and that was old Jet that I'm leading. I used to pack with her, and anywhere Jet went, Jenny would just follow. She was like a dog. She'd just follow everywhere. So that's where I got my mules. 
uh, my first two mules. And then I've, I've traded a couple mules in and out. I had a, a really nice mule that uh, uh, Josh Rain, Rainwater got me. And uh, she was a big stout mule. You've probably seen me ride her. Uh, she, she rode around like a horse. She had a really good set of withers on her. And uh, I sold her to a guy. She, and uh, she went up to, matter of fact, he watches my videos. And uh, then I had, uh, I got Big Agnes, my mule I ride now. My dad traded for that mule. And uh, I packed her for several years. And then uh, my brother-in-law and my, my nephew, uh, they came down deer hunting with me. And I was short a mule. And so that was the, when I first started riding her. And uh, I learned kind of a valuable lesson right there. And she was pretty green. But she's real gentle, real gentle, and uh, not scared of nothing. Nothing boogers her. And we were way up on top of a mountain deer hunting, and uh, she got lazy on me, and she didn't want to go. And she's real uh, real heavy-sided, we call it. Uh, you kick her hard, and she doesn't. She just grunts. She wouldn't hardly go. And I kind of got upset with her because she was getting lazy, and I broke off a branch, and I whipped her on the hind end. She had never been whipped before, and... Uh, let me tell you what, we went right then. Let me go to another question. I think this is a long one. Yeah. Let's see. Since you presented the opportunity, I'm going to take advantage. How do you go about condition your dogs? How many miles? How hard? How often? How old are they when you really start on them? Uh, no common sense is a big part. I, oh, I know common sense is a big part of it. What do you do and recommend? Thank you. You might be catching on. I have no one in person to learn from through your content and others around you. I'm putting it all together and on my way. I, even now with the temperature as hot as it is, I get my dogs out. I try to get up you know, 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and the temperature's still around 78, 80 degrees, and uh, I go out, and, and I, got a, I got a can on him, I got a buggy, and uh, I go out and I rode him, you know, I, I rode him for probably two or three hours, something like that, and, and uh, try to keep, there's no water where I rode him, so I have to pack a little bit of water, but I rotate them, I've, I've got quite a few dogs, and I rotate them, because I can't, I can't haul many of them in that in that in that buggy, and uh, I got one little dog box that slides in the bed. But Old South dog boxes is uh, they're building me a, a bed for that thing, a flat bed with a bigger box, and and I I don't really like to hunt out of a buggy. But it's real handy when you've got other things to do. You can load up the dogs. You can go out. And hit an old arroyo, you know, a sandy arroyo that's not hard on their feet. And uh, you can get a lot of miles and you can get them, you can get them legged up pretty decent. Ah, G3 Outdoors. Hey, what's up? And uh, what was the other question? Oh, do, 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 do. Condition your dogs. How many miles? I don't know how many miles that is. But I, I also rotate them. I take one set of dogs. And then the day after that, I'll take another set. Uh I think one of the biggest problems is most of us don't have enough time to hunt the dogs as hard as we need to. Uh, they, they need to be hunted. I mean, they need to be out. And, and uh, I know a lot of guys just don't have time. So they hang a dog on a chain or keep them in a pen and they don't get them out, you know, enough to, to do them good. Then they get them out and they're, they're, they're idiots, you know, they've got lots of energy and they just run and gun. It, it's, it's, it, it, and I've been there. I've done the same thing. Uh, let's see how many miles, how hard, how, how old are they? Oh, when you're, when I really start them, I've been real fortunate, uh, because I have older dogs I can run them with as soon as they can keep up, you know, probably around uh, six, seven months old, maybe eight months old. They can kind of keep up especially on short days, you know, if I'm only going to ride, you know, an eight or 10 mile circle, I take them with me, you know, and, and, uh, uh, I put a tracking collar on them and, and it's the best way to evaluate them too, you know, see how they're doing. And, uh, 
yeah, and then after that, it's just as they get in better shape and they, they go, then we can make bigger circles. Let's see. Watching from Alexandria, Virginia with my six-year-old Catahoula. Kerr, we watch every video together, and he loves when your dogs start howling. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, man, I love it too. Okay, Cameron Coleman asked me a question. Not howling related, Brett, but watching your videos, I've wondered in that dry, rocky country, how many acres per cow do you need there? Cheers. Jeez, ah, you know, what is it, 600 and something acres to a section? And uh, I don't know. It, it, it varies. I, I mean, if you get out in some, you know, up in the higher elevations where they get a little more of the monsoon rains and everything, I'm sure it's higher. Cameron, if I told you, I, I just don't know. I know it's not many. Uh, let me go to the next question. Let's see, let me make sure I got that one right. So where can I order a water bottle? Shoot me an email. Shoot me an email and put water bottle in the subject line. And uh, I'll let you know how you can get one. If you're here, I'm going to give one away. I guess still got to figure out how I can do that. I got super chats too, so I think I do. You can give me a super chat and that'll put you at the top of the list. Okay. Oh, this is, hey, Brett, this is a hard one. Uh, I got one for you. How do you go about aging a track on dry ground? Uh, I know experience is everything, but what visual signs besides how the dogs move it are you looking at? The track itself, say if conditions are steady, not much wind, no rain, no weather conditions, that, that would make it obvious it's age. Thanks, buddy. Typically, when I find a lion on a track, let me see if I can find this, this video. I'll show you something. But typically, when I find a lion track, it's in an arroyo. It's in a dry uh, dry arroyo, arroyo or, or, and it's in the sand. And uh, in the sand like that, and, and I'm not saying I'm real accurate. I, I just, I've gotten better over the years. But... If it's a fresh track and it was made that night and the conditions have been pretty good, you can still see a little moisture down in the bottom of that track. As it old, as it gets old, it gets drier looking. It gets and it'll look dry, and then the edges of the of the pad or the toes, you'll start seeing the sand that'll that'll cave in, and the granulars will be inside the track. To me, that's an older track. And then as that ages, it gets more sloughed off. And, and it's hard to describe, but you can just kind of look at it and, and, and kind of tell. You get better at it. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm very accurate, but uh, anyway. G3 Outdoors New Mexico enjoyed the Gila trip from the Snow Lake side. What way did you go in? I went in there at Snow Lake. I went straight down from the, from the dam on Snow Lake. And uh, I got there late. I went around. I mean, I, I thought I'd come in from uh, Magdalena there. And that's a long ways through there. And I'd much rather, I'd much rather go in right there at the cliff dwellings. And uh, I'd rather ride my, my mule six hours than drive four and a half hours in the truck. Let me see if I can find this little, this little video here. But I do. Now, this is this is my old Jet Johnson mule. For those of y'all who don't know, when a big Tom Lyons going through the country, he'll mark his territory and places to let everybody know he's in there. And uh, he'll, he'll take his back feet and he'll pull like that. And they call it a scratch or a pull or, or, or whatever. And I was trailing an old lion track one time. And this is my old mule, Jet. And this is what he would do. I, 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 I stood him over this old lion track or this old lion scratch. This is pretty cool. Does he stink? Does he stink bad? That's old Jet. He's on retire. He's still alive, but he's on retirement. Let's see. Yeah, man, been too hot here to do anything around 100 every day. The Adventure Cowboy, howdy. I've been following you for a long time. 
but this is the first time I've been able to join your live stream. Glad to be here. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad you're here too. I, I'm not real good at this. I, I, I like to do it because it's fun to be able to talk to everybody and kind of uh, make it a little more personal, I guess. So, so sorry. If your videos answer this, do you need to bring food for your mule when you go out overnight or do they just find stuff in the wild? Uh, we, ho we hobble them and let them graze. And then I also pack pellets. I'll pack a, a, an alfalfa grass blend pellet. And then sometimes I'll pack rolled oats. And uh, you feed them in the feed bags, or we call them morals, and uh, just to keep them going. And then, and then if there's grass, I hobble them and let them, let them graze. Or uh, I got a video I'll show you guys here in a little while if you're interested. And it's, it's, it's a pack trip that I took back in 2010. And I went way back into, well, I say way back. It felt like way back then. And uh, I camped with Jet and Jenny. It's my little sister. But if you guys are interested in watching that video, wait a minute. I'll probably have to leave it to you and go use the restroom here in a minute. So I'll, I'll leave it on when I leave. Give you something to look at besides my chair. So my little sister, Joy Durant. When are you going to go to the cooler country like Nevada again, Don? It would make a good video. I went up there one time and I lost probably three quarters of my footage. I spent, what I do? I spent two weeks up there, I think. But uh, as soon as I get my, my, my health thing kind of taken care of, I want to go to Nevada, especially this time of year. I could go up into that higher country and the jaw bridge or whatever. And, and I imagine up there on top, it's quite a bit cooler. Emmett Henders, those jag plots tune up with your dogs. Oh, <laughs> open up when they look where they're coming from. Uh, jet rules. Yeah, I, you know, I was spoiled when I got Jet. Now, he wasn't always a, a super good mule, but, uh, you know, he had buck with you. He could, but he, he couldn't, he couldn't buck hard enough to throw a fat man. And, uh, but he would go and, uh, after he got real used to me, well, here you go. You want to see another video? I got these videos. I just learned how to do this, so now I'm showing off. This is, uh, I was going up a canyon, and uh, the creek was froze over, and I was kind of nervous about uh, riding him because it, 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 it happened to me before. You get on that ice, and that mule can slip and and fall down and i was way up way up above the my old camp up there this is probably about 2012 or 13 and this is old jet right here all right the floods washed everything out it's cold frozen figure out a way to get through this <clears throat> I just take that mule, tie the reins up around his that saddle horn, and I'll walk on through here. I just don't want him to get on top of me, so I let him pick his own way. Yeah. That'll boy that don't One of the worst things is getting in and getting in a bad spot and let that letting that mule. Not so bad a mule but a horse get them jump and getting up on top of you. That'll That'll get you hurt. Question, Alex River, do you mind talking more about your long dogs? I wasn't around for those days. Did you run terriers or well, as well? And what made you switch to just hounds? What? I mean, uh, running lions or hunting lions has always fascinated me. 
And uh, I tried to do it years ago, and we didn't have the internet. And uh, that was when, I mean, this is back in the 80s. I went and seen Henry McIntyre. I seen Ross Johnson. I seen, tried to see Mike Root. You couldn't hardly ever find Mike Root because he was always way up in the mountains. And I'd go by his house and he wasn't there. And uh, I really, I, I couldn't get going. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't get any good dogs or anything. And, and uh, I used to take a bunch of dogs out and ride around, and, but I didn't ever do any good. And I remember when I was a kid, uh, there was, my dad had a friend named Jack Bollock and he used to come by and he, he would run coyotes with his dogs. And it, I, I learned about that and I seen a, an advertisement in the, in the newspaper for a, uh, three quarters greyhound, a quarter pit bulldog. Uh, and she was my first one, Tazzy. And right at that time I was, I was going through a divorce and, uh, I didn't have enough money to do anything. I couldn't even hardly drive out of the yard. So, and I was riding, uh, I was, I was trying to rope quite a bit then. And, uh, I had some young horses. So I just started taking the, taking the, uh, taking the dogs out on the, on the young horses and, and, uh, riding. And, and one thing led to another. Pretty soon I, I, I was running jackrabbits with Tazzy. And then I decided I was going to try to run coyotes, and uh, I can't remember which dog I got next. Oh, that's when, and then I started calling coyotes in for the dogs to run them. And uh, it, it's, it, it worked pretty good. I, get, I got where it was working pretty good, but I didn't, like Tazzy, even though she was a super jackrabbit dog, and she had brothers that were good coyote dogs. She wouldn't grab a hold of a coyote. It was just like she was playing tag with them. She was fast enough. She would run out there and just kind of run right up on them and, and touch them, and then she was done. So I got a hold of David Heiss, and David got me a, a couple of dogs, and then I got another dog, Poke. He was real fast. Pretty soon I had about six of them, and uh, I got to call and, calling them in. Uh, First, I'd, I'd go out and I'd call on the alfalfa pivots and, and have them in. I had a jump box on my truck. No, first, I didn't even have a jump box in my truck. First, I just had I just loaded them up in the super cab, pretty redneck, loaded them up in the super cab of the truck and just opened that back door and kick them out. And then I got a jump box. My brother-in-law, matter of fact, Joy, it's on here. My little sister, her husband built me a jump box for the back of my truck. And I started doing that. And then I got where I just wanted to do it on, uh, on horseback. And I got where I was going out and calling them. And, uh, yeah, and, and did pretty good. I had, I, you know, I had some video that I tried to make back then. And uh, this was probably in the 90s, I guess. There was no YouTube or anything. And uh, then I caught that lion on the ground. And that kind of got me thinking about lions and then I switched and I started getting lion hounds and started trying to do that. And, uh, yeah, still struggling with that, but let's see, Troy Hester, Brett, you're out and about a lot with, with just your mules and your hounds and overnight has anything ever really scared you? And if so, what happened? I, me and my wife has talked about that. I, I don't know. I haven't been scared. I, I got a video I'll show you guys here in a little while. And I remember that night on my last camp, I was just sleeping on my saddle pads and I was way up in the wilderness. And I guess it was a bunch of elk that came right through camp and they were grazing coming up through there. And then when they, when they recognized that, that I was there, this, I mean, I didn't see this, this but what I assumed happened, they took off running. That startled me a little bit. But uh, other than that, I can't ever remember being scared. You know, I, I, I know it's a strange thing, but I always feel real, real comfortable when I'm out like that. I mean, I, I, I really do. Now, sometimes you know, the thought thinking about going out, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you have, you have, uh, your mind starts still telling you little scary stories of things that could happen. 
but other than that, no, I don't, I don't really ever get scared. Badlands, BMC, Black Mouth Curse. How's it going, Brett? Been enjoying your videos. Thank you. Eli Robbins. Hey, guy. Are you still planning a long trip on the Butterfield? Yes, I am. Uh, matter of fact, Onyx Maps, they're, uh, if you guys don't know anything about Onyx, uh, they're an app that you have on your phone. I'm sure most, pe most people know about it. But anyway, it's a super uh, mapping program, and I've been using it for years. I used Onyx back before they even had an app for the smartphone. You could buy a chip that you put in your Garmin. Uh, and this was just a Garmin uh, GPS, not the kind you track your dogs with. This is back when I had the beep beep beep, beep collars. Anyway, uh, now that I sold my business and I'm, I'm going to be making videos uh, all the time, I thought, well, I'll see if I can get a sponsor to... So I sent Onyx uh, an email and telling them that I've been using their stuff for years and years and, and that I got these trips planned. And, and really, that's what I want to do is, is, is I want to spend more time packing up in the wilderness. And, uh, and I told them about I want to ride the Butterfield Trail. I want to do the Continental Divide Trail. I want to do part of the Outlaw Trail. I want to do... a. Uh, uh, what the Hornado del Murto. Uh, there's a lot of those ones I want to do. And the idea is, and I know this probably kind of sounds strange, but I want to pack my mules and ride right out of my yard. I don't want to get in the truck and drive somewhere. I just want to pack them right there, kiss my wife goodbye, and say, you know, ride right out of the yard and either make a great big circle or uh, leave my truck somewhere, you know, like three or four days before and then come back and do it. But anyway, back to Onyx, and uh, Onyx said they'd sponsor me, and uh, they said, you know, the Butterfield Trail ride is going to be powered by Onyx Maps, and then uh, I have a code. It's 100 years. If you buy Onyx Maps and you use that code, you get 20% off, and then uh, I get a little kickback from that too. So, and I'm real pleased with them. I, you know... I'm a small creator in a fairly small niche, you know, uh, on YouTube. I'm not a gamer or, you know, all these silly videos they got on YouTube. So it's real, really good to have somebody who come on and support me. So, yeah, long answer to a small question. But, yes, I plan on doing the Butterfield, Butterfield Trail now that I'm, now that I'm uh, retired. I got to get my I got to get my ticker fixed though. So as soon as I get it fixed, I'm gone somewhere. I want to wait. I got to wait until it's a little cooler for the for the Butterfield Trail, just because of uh, it's it's in low country. It's going to be pretty hot, and I don't want to I don't want to fight you know ninety degree weather, or hundred degree weather. Armando Mata, how can you hunt lions without dogs? We're down in the southern area, close to the Mexican border. Any tips? A predator call, you know, I, I think, I mean, if, if, if somebody told me, you know, uh, go, you know, here, go hunt a lion and don't take any dogs. I would spend a lot of time just like I do with dogs. I mean, it's basically the same thing. I would go out and ride the countryside and work those canyons and those big saddles and everything and try to find some lion signs. And then when you find lion sign or if you could find a kill or you could find where a tom a scrape line or whatever like that, then just hit, keep hitting those spots and, and call, you know. And when you call to set up to call, uh, you know, call, be patient and call for, you know, I would say you'd sit on stand for an hour. I, I You know, not like coyotes where you, what, 12 to 15 minutes or something like that. I would call for up to an hour. But. Yeah, that's what I do. And I bet, especially in that country, I bet you could be successful. Emmett Henderson, is the Black Range typically cooler in midsummer? You get a pie, it's a little cooler, Emmett, but not, I mean, it's still up in the 90s. Who is your favorite dog and why? The one I have now is Booger. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 
he's a booger, but he'll go catch you a lion. And he's, I like booger. I like pee. You know, I like Uno and Al. Al's probably my favorite dog on track. He's uh he's he's uh he I like the way he moves a track. In other words, you know, when you're when you're when you when you when Al's trailing, he uh he's not very babbly. P's pretty babbly, but she serves her purpose. And uh Booger, he can get a little lazy from time to time on a cold track. Uh, but Al, when he barks on a track, you don't hear him for a while. And the next thing you'll hear him way up there. Bah! You know, and then, and then now the dogs all know, so they honor him and they go to him. So he really helps move a track well. And then when it's a good track... He, he, he trails it. I say it's just like he's rolling a ball in front of his nose. Just do, 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 do. And he'll ball. And then about 15, 20 feet ball, he'll open again. It's pretty cool to watch. Uh, who's your favorite dog? And okay, hey, Brett, love the videos. Heard you met a buddy of mine. Louis Pearl, a retired Arizona deputy out there in New Mexico. Has mules as well. Keep up the, uh, the great videos. I can't remember. Joy says it was good. Thank you, sister. You're supposed to say that, though. That, that Bowman, perfect, Brett. Troy Hester, all good here. Perfect. Looks good. Sounds good. Thank you. Emmett, yeah. See in here. Okay, good. Yeah, that's kind of a new thing, being able to show those videos. That's pretty cool because then, I mean, it, it makes it, it gives a new dynamic to the to a live stream, you know. You gave yourself plenty of room on that video walking ahead of your mule, but why is the rope so short to your pack mule? I didn't even have a rope on my pack mule on that video. I was letting her follow me. I probably didn't, I didn't even have it hooked up. I just, I, I unclipped it from the halter, I believe. Because I think that was the kind of the purpose of that that one video was to show how uh, how Jenny would just follow us around. Maybe I maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Hello from Oregon. I Brett Matt here from Southern West Australia, down under. Love your viz. Looking forward to your big trips. Cheers. Thank you, man. I'm looking forward to them. I'm craving it like a kid craves candy. Hi Matt. I'm in Victoria. Cool. This is a fine channel here, Brett. Thank you very much. Chuck Miller, there's my buddy. I will be downloading Onyx Maps soon. Use the code 100 years. Thank you, Chuck. I'm going to, I'm going to, I need to get your number, Chuck. I think you sent it to me in an email. I need to call you. I'd like to, I got a lot of questions for you. Matt Reyes, sure is one of the best to watch. Love the content. Thank you, Eric Carlson. Hello, Brett. Which version of Onyx Maps do you like the best? I use the hunt map, and uh, I, I don't know. It's the pro, I guess. But it's the hunt map. I know they have an off-road version, too. But I think it's all included in the same thing, I think. Yes, love watching the videos, tracking cats with hounds, keep them going. Can't hear you even with hearing aids. Sorry, Calvin. I don't know. It says, everything says it's pegging out. I got a little uh, uh, audio thing here that tells you my decibels or whatever you call it, and it's pegging out. What was your business? Do you mind talking about it? I know you're retired now, but you have mentioned in a lot of your videos about traveling for your work. My dad started it years ago is a, a cathodic protection business, corrosion control, and we specialized on uh, large water reservoirs for you for water systems. Uh, you know, you know, we've done we've done tanks as big as 10 million gallons, and uh, we also did some work on pipelines and any metallic structure in a conductive electrolyte. And uh, I learned it from him. 
I never really got any of the certifications you're supposed to get. Uh, but I made a living at it for 30 years. You know, so I, well, I worked for the company longer than, than that. And then uh, I took over and uh, did it myself for the last 30 years. And, you know, I, I, I had a couple guys that worked with me for a long time. And then uh, one of them quit. Well, both of them quit. But uh, here, right when COVID started, the guy that, Danny, he had worked for me for 20 years. And, and he did most of the traveling. And uh, I'd do the paperwork and bid jobs and do the, the designs. And he would go do the installations. And I never was, like, big on getting big, growing the company. I just do enough, you know. And, and uh, he quit. And I spent the last three years doing everything myself. And, uh, you know, shoot, I... Uh, I didn't. I tried not to stay in motel rooms. I, I, I kind of thought, well, that's kind of silly, you know. I go out here and camp in the mountains. Why, when I go do a job, do I pay a hundred dollars to stay in a motel? And uh, I don't even turn on the TV. I don't watch TV hardly. And uh, I thought that's stupid. So I just started. I had a, a, a cargo trailer that I pulled behind my truck. And I just take my sleeping bag and my jet boil, and I'd camp in it. And I milked every dime out of those jobs. And then uh, a friend of mine's son, Matt, he's a, well, the friend of mine's Juan. If you ever watched any of my pack tripping videos, he, uh, you'll see he, he, he uh, Juan went on those with me. Well, he was really interested in the business, and, uh, He's, he's, he's buying it from me, and uh, he's doing real good. The kid, he's real, real smart, and uh, he's real motivated. He's, he's a young guy, and he's already an engineer, so he's got everything going with him or going for him. So he'll do good. Um, I'm, I'm happy. I just, I just wish that uh, right when I sold the business and made the deal, I started having some, uh, that's the way I was born. I was born with these little electrical, extra electrical pathways in my heart. And so I, I need to have them ablated. So then the, the problem was that the, the, my wife was in, in there when the doctor told me, he said, no, you don't get out of socket. You don't need to be going too far away from town. So kind of grounded me. Awesome, Brett. That you will do, hello, Brett. Nice to see you, Freddie Lee. Yeah, I'm on a lot of not really way to hunt lions without dogs. You can predator call them sometimes. Yep, exactly. Awesome, Chuck Miller. I've called in multiple bears, but never a lion. A bear coming to a call exciting enough. Calling a big old sneaky cat to me might be a little more excitement than yeah. Yeah, the bears will dang sure come to a call. Most scared I've ever been was getting caught in a lightning storm hunting mule back with the dogs. Most insane storm I've ever been in. You could just feel it before I ever saw the flash. I got a video. I can't remember which video it is where I got caught in a lightning storm. Then you're out there on that mule. He's walking on the iron and uh, there was big old lightning coming down and I left him up the hill, and I climbed down the mountain and kind of got, got his, then we don't have any trees or anything, so I just got down as low as I could. Yeah, I guess somebody asked if I was ever scared. I was a little bit scared then, I scared of lightning, but louder works great. Louder, oh, perfect. Better, yes, you found the right knob. <laughs> Sounds much better. It's better. I'm going to want to just be careful. I know someone who... Called in a lion, he snuck up and behind. He never seen it coming. Oh, yeah. I bet that happens often. You want to have a tree or a big old boulder or something right at your back because you you don't want one thinking you're something to eat. Audio is fine, but you'll be louder now before your video. I got way behind here. Yes, you can call in a lion. It's loud. Any breath? Yes, the volume is better. Sound good, Chuck. I give it a try. It's much better. Audio good. Wondering. Do you have any more hunts, plans with Cody King? Yes, me and Cody. Matter of fact, Cody is in Africa right now. He might be back. 
I don't know, but he is hunting leopards, not with his dogs. He went with an outfitter down there. So he's hunting with le or hunting leopards down there. And he is supposed to be videoing that for me. And uh, it's probably something him and I will put on that, that other channel I have, interview stories and tales. Uh, it'll be something that's probably better suited for that because we'll probably make the video and maybe make it like we did the one in Oklahoma. And then we, we can kind of have his commentary over the video. I think that'd be good kind of explaining him. Let's see, Judith Wright, you're all good, Brad. I think you're just catching up with the low volume comments. For I know I'm way behind. Sounds good. Howdy, Trailmaster. Joanne, sounds good from here in North Idaho. Oh, by the way, hello from Southern California. Closed caption could help, Brett, for those with low hearing. That's true. I don't know how to do closed caption here. I think something they can turn on on their on their deal. Uh, you have a mule jerk off the shoe and take half the uh, goofball with it. Just happened to me yesterday. I had a hell of a time getting the mule back to the truck. We were ways back in, in the West Fork. I, I heard about that. You also had two flat tires. I was uh, talking to Jim Farmer and Carl Boykin today and uh cod cadwell cadwell the i can't remember, i'm sorry i'm terrible with names came in and he was he was uh telling me about that telling me he was he was gonna have to come rescue or something and his wife's pregnant and <laughs> do any day so no i've never uh i've never had that problem uh, who's your f farrier i mean were you were you sliding down a mountain in the in the mule overreached and 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 you had some trailers on the back of those shoes or did you just have trailers on the back of the shoes i imagine it can happen i'll tell you about big big agnes i haven't had to put shoes on her now i always had to put shoes on jet jenny i have to put shoes on uh my pack mule ruth but uh agnes I haven't had to put shoes on her. One year I put shoes on her front feet, but not her back feet. And uh, the last two years I haven't put shoes on her. Of course, I haven't hunted it as hard as, as I have in the past. But, uh, yeah. Did you draw any tags in New Mexico this year? Yep. We got uh, me and my grandson and my nephew have uh, deer tags. I think. I don't know if it's archery or uh, or muzzle loader or rifle. I don't even know. I'm kind of bad if, if if I can't. I don't. I like to take them, but first place I don't like venison. I don't like deer, and I like the, the back straps okay. But and I'm not. I mean, I the only thing I really care about hunting with is my dogs. It's just me. Regarding the Butterfield trip, can you show the short clip of the CCC dam you visited where trail crosses the north end of the Good Side Mountains, if you have time? I'll see if I can look it up uh, uh, here in a minute, Garland. That's the that's the one that you told me was there, and I said, no, I've been all over that country. I've never seen that place. And you said, yes, and you told me where it was at, and I rode out there, and I found it, and I made a video. And I think I even apologize to you. Arizona, you hear of that happening more and more often. I was going to say people call in lions without ever seeing them. Yeah, we're having a terrible lightning thunderstorm here tonight, southeastern Oklahoma. What breeds make up great lion tracking dogs? I run German short or whatever GSDs. I don't know for SARS, uh, Wolf Isols. Uh, you know, it's blue ticks, uh, English red ticks, you know, walker dogs. I mean, because of where we hunt, you increase your odds of having a, a, a good, what we call a dry ground lion hound. If you try to get them from uh, uh, people who are hunting the way you do in the same kind of country you're hunting, you just... Now, I'm not saying you can't bring a dog in from another part of the, the country and him, him, him adjust and do fine. I don't know. But I know to increase your odds, 
go to somebody who is doing it the way you want to do it and is being successful successful so i'm here i have an echo and it's screwing up my my hearing how much for onyx tags and oryx you mean oryx oryx tags i don't know I got it. I shot an Oryx. Now, I do like Oryx meat. That's some good stuff. Uh, yeah, bogged the mule down in a bit of mud. I'm guessing he hooked it with his hind foot trying to get out of the mud. Yes, I, I can sure see that happening. There's Mr. George Lambert. Uh, Mountain Music and Mules. Hello, Brett. We are watching from Caldwell, Idaho. Oh, no, this is, this is Mr. George Lambert. Mountain Music and Mules' father, I believe. From Caldwell, Idaho today. As always, enjoying your live show. I love riding George's mule Cletus. Yeah, I bet. Okay, let me go back to YouTube and see if I can get through. Uh, do do. Yeah, here's the question. Do you have any uh, big trips planned in the fall? How are you settling in to full retirement? Uh, I'm settling in. It, it's kind of, i tell you what. It's kind of hard like I was telling my wife earlier I said you know I've had I've had doctor's appointments and stuff so you know I had things that I had to go do you know something on the calendar but then I told her tonight I said I feel weird you know tomorrow's Monday I don't have nothing on the calendar I don't have nothing I have to do that feels a little bit weird because even, you know, I always had like a job that I was going to have to go do. And I mean, uh, but I could put it off if I had to or if I wanted to do it when I when I wanted to. But yeah, it's kind of weird. It, it's it's when you've worked most of your life, it, it's kind of strange. But I'm looking forward, man. I, there's I got all kinds of pack trips I want to take, you know, uh, there's. I want to do those, those those longer rides, you know, four or five days. I want to go. Uh, uh, there's just lots of places I want to see. I want to go to. But let's see. When do you think the shit hit the fan is going to go down? Uh, <laughs> I don't I, I I don't know, but I think it's going to. I mean, I, I don't think the country can keep going the way it's going. Uh, something, I think something's going to happen. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to say what's going to happen or how bad it's going to be or what what a person should do. I, I mean, I got... You know what, you guys? Let me share this video with you, because I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta go to the restroom. And this is kind of, if you're working, welcome. Uh, uh, I get. I see the chat, and I get confused. I uh, back in 2010, I took this little pack trip, and uh, back then we thought you know it was the economic collapse everything was everything was bad you know uh i think it was just when obama was elected if i remember correctly but i remember taking off and going to the mountains and and packing in and going up the animus and and trying you know finding places that i thought that we could we could go if things, you know, things fell apart, you know, where could I take my family? What could I do? So, and so this is an old, old, and, and it's, it's, it's basically a bunch of little snapshots. But if you look at my little red book, it's from 2010. I think I got it right here. Let me, here it is right here. I used, I carry these. I, don't know, I wonder if I wrote in it. I'll be dang. Yeah. But anyway, I packed in because
<laughs> you can see I kind of wrote in them. Anyway, and uh, I was just starting to, to video a little bit, and I, and I took a bunch of pictures. So here, watch this while I go. Uh, while I go look at that restroom. Don't make fun of my diamond hitch. It wasn't very good back then. bunch of dry ground dogs right there they don't know how to cross a creek could you hear me when I said that bunch of dry ground dogs don't know how to cross water watch Missy <laughs> that was back in 2010. And if you look, there was a book that I was reading when I was up there that talked about the economic collapse and uh, how everything was going to happen. Well, that was 2010, and they wrote that book, and that's 
when they said that was going to happen. So I, you know, so when you say, when do I think it's going to, when do you think the, the is going to go down? I don't know. I don't know. But I think you should be prepared. I really do. Looks like the Amazon. <laughs> it was. It was. She didn't know. Poor old sissy. We caught a, she, she was, uh, she was killed by a bear uh, probably about two years later. Missy was her name. Okay, what is the maximum weight on your pack animal? You know what? I'm doing this. I forgot. Oh, no. Yep. What is the maximum weight on your pack animal? This, first let me say, I try to go as light as I can. I use a lot of backpacking gear. I mean, I don't do like the old cowboys used to do. I don't carry a cast iron skillet, but I don't carry titanium either, ultra light. I just try to stay as light as I can and still stay comfortable. Uh, most of the time, I'm going to say between my panniers and and my saddle and my pads and everything i probably don't have over 110 pounds on my mule and uh and that's that's packing quite a bit of comfortable stuff and then of course i have i carry camera gear and stuff like that but uh i did look this up so i would be able to answer this question correctly so, doo -doo 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 -doo. U.S. Army specifications for pack mules state that American mules can carry up to 20% of their body weight, 150 to 300 pounds for 15 to 20 miles per day in the mountains. Wickler says there are some anecdotal reports of 350 to 400 pounds and even an 1867 reference to six to 800 pounds for mules. That'd have to be a pretty stout mule. So there you go. Whoever asked that question in YouTube, I did the best I could. What were the dogs you had in 2010 and where did you get them from? And was it your own line of dogs? Uh, yeah, uh, Missy came from let me think her daddy no she came she was out of a dog named doc that came from steve smith real good dog i, I think i got her from uh i can't remember i think david heiss or riley miller hoover the big red tick dog he was from uh riley miller he was a good good dog and uh, but a slow starter. A lot of guys would have got rid of him. And uh, so, of course, you can see Solo there. I think uh, HB was a quarter Airedale, and out of Super Hever, Super Hever, Super Hoover, and uh, they were all they were better dogs than I was a hunter. I'll guarantee you. Uh, but. Yeah, and Solo Solo was, you know, from that first pack of dogs that I bought, uh, Bo, Susie, Solo, Blackie, and Trip. Yeah, so they all kind of go back to the same stuff. You heard from Cody King. I think he's hunting leopards in Africa. Yeah, Timothy, that's what uh, that's what I, I I I talked about earlier. We're supposed to be he's supposed to be videoing. He's not the best videographer in the world. I've been trying to coach him a little bit. <laughs> Jeffy. Hi, Brett. I can't stay. Just wanted to say, well, stop. Thanks for stopping by. Well, five souls. Brave enough to figure it out. Yes. I kept working at it. They didn't want to be left alone. All right. Let me go back to YouTube here. What's the maximum weight? Okay. New Year channel. Glad I found it. Great stuff. Got a question, though. Why on you? Oh, this is... If I've had this question one time, I've had it a thousand times. Why on your pack mule do you leave its tail tucked in under the rear pack strap, which would be the britchin? 
It can't swat at flies and craps on itself, don't it? They can pull it out. There's about, it looks like that, if you've never been around me, it looks like that tail just hangs down. There's nothing to it. But there's about that, where's my, about that much bone in there. Can you see that? And they can pull it out, and they do. The worst thing is is a, a mare mule or whatever you call them, a jenny or whatever, is when they have to take a leak, and then that strap can get right in the way, and uh, that can make things kind of messy. But I don't worry about it. I pull it out sometimes, I mean, when I think about it, but I don't worry about it. Anyway. Boy, I get that question a lot. Everybody notices that. Let's see. On that last video, he says that trail looks pretty blown out. How was the tread? It was good. No, anytime you 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 know most of the time on those trails, it's not too bad. The biggest thing is, and you get into some of them up high where there's a lot of blowdown. You know the the uh, there's places where there's so logs are across the trail so bad you can't hardly get through. Uh, you pack out too. I don't know. I'm not sure what he's referencing to. You pack out too. I guess so. Yeah. If I pack in, I got to pack out because I'm here. Uh, are those water tanks on private land or do they have those on public land too? Most of them are on private land. They, they, there's little sections of private land in the middle of the BLM and everything and they and those those water tanks that's where they're at uh how heavy is your pack we talked about that a little while ago probably if it's a hundred and usually when i weigh my panniards each one is about 35 or 40 pounds so the time you get your pads and my and my my bedroll and uh my mani tarp and everything on there so i'm probably around 110 maybe Uh, I say in my answer, I bet she isn't carrying over 80 pounds. Uh, the other day, my better half just found out that mules can't procreate. Nope. Then she asked me, so how do you make a mule? And I said to her, I think I know just who to ask. <laughs> yeah, a jack uh, over a mare makes a mule uh, a st horse stallion over uh, a jenny i guess is what you call it or a female donkey whatever you call them wouldn't be a, a, a henny and i'm not convinced that jet wasn't a henny because where all my other mules are real hooked on each other he never was. He was always, I mean, he, he attached to me. I mean, he, he didn't care anything about the other mules, really. Uh, and he, they said, when you said you get a donkey over a mare, I had a visual, started laughing. How do you do that? Been that the donkey is so much smaller. Yeah, the donkey's smaller. I mean, some of those big old mammoth jacks are huge, but they're all pretty well endowed. They can reach pretty good. Uh, hey, Brett, how do you go about breaking your dogs from snakes? And and for your snake bit dogs, what was the uh, weight ratio mixture for the Dex and Benadryl? Thanks, man, for a huge, uh, you're a huge help. Uh, I don't differentiate for the weight. I give... Uh, Three cc's of Dex under the skin, three cc's in the muscle, and then three cc's under the skin for the next three days. And uh, I get Benadryl. You know, they say it works. I, I don't know. I've done it a few times. I've only had one dog die from a snake bite. That was Sissy. Not Missy. Sissy. And uh, we were way up on the mountain. I'm, it was my fault. I made a mistake. Uh I, I, I had a snake start rattling, 
and he was down in a hole, kind of what he was still where they could get to him. And uh, I I shot the snake. I had a I had my little twenty two, and I shot the snake. Well, when Sissy heard me shoot, she has had game shot out to her before. She come running down and ran right to where I shot. And I didn't kill the snake when I shot. And she ran right there and stood right by it and looked back at me. And the snake bit her on the leg. And I was up there and I was on foot. And uh, it took me a long time to get her out. And she, she lived for about a week. And she was an old dog. And uh, she got better. And then I went out there and she, she had died one day. So that's the only dog I've lost to a snake bite. And I don't, you know, I know a lot of guys get, I've heard all kinds of stories about, you know, defanging them or, or, or taping their mouth shut or something and setting up your dogs. Typically, I'm, I'm somewhere, you know, and I run into a rattlesnake and they go over there to look at them. And I got, I got shot collars on my dogs. And if they start getting close, I, I go to buzzing them, you know, and, and teach them that that's not something we mess with. My mule's like Jet. She'd rather be alone than run with a herd. That, those are the good ones. I worked a henny mare mule. Not a good experience. Oh, really? Timothy, what, 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 what kind of problems did you have, if you don't mind answering? So if the mule has a bad back, why riot it? And I had a smart aleck answer for this. I said, because I don't like to eat mules. <laughs> you got to use them. I mean, she's got a bad back. So I pat her up correctly and, uh, and, and ride her. She doesn't have much. You know, a lot of mules don't have good backs. But she's got a pretty bad one, really. Yes, I bought that 410 for for uh for snakes and then i don't know i always wanted when i was a kid i had an old break over 410 that my dad let me carry everywhere and uh i carried it and then when i and i've always wanted a henry and when i seen henry had that 410 i wanted it, it makes a good saddle rifle too you know and i would think if you had slugs for it you know it'd probably be pretty deadly out to 10 15 yards and then you could carry you know regular shot in it and it'd be good for squirrels and rabbits and rattlesnakes thought it might make a fairly good survival gun i don't know i'm not i'm not real knowledgeable on on guns and everything uh did you ever untuck that poor mule's tail there it is again does the other guy with the beard have hounds? I think he is a preacher. Oh yeah, that's old John. That's from our other, our other deal. Uh, what is your defensive weapon of choice? You mentioned you had one in the video, but you didn't say what it was. Well, I got that Henry 410. I've packed a 3030 with me since uh, forever. My dad bought it for me when I was like nine or ten years old, and. Uh, it's a it's a Winchester Model 94, and then uh, I have a uh, uh, 1911 uh, pistol, but I'm not a very good shot with a pistol. So, okay, I noticed in some of your older videos you had stag hounds, greyhounds, but not anymore. How come? I just got into these uh, lion hunt hounds, and uh, that's a you know, and and really, I. I uh, I tell everybody the same thing, you know. I, I got to hunt because I was in business for myself. I got to hunt more than most people, but I still didn't get to hunt enough to be good, you know, to have, you know, to be able to catch enough lions to be good. And, uh, but I'm working on changing all that. But, yeah, it's been fascinating to me that trailing a lion, you know, whether I catch it or not is uh, – it was like one of the funnest things I ever did. She was a sale barn critter. I was tasked with working. I think she might have been doped before the sale. Yeah, that, that can sure happen. 
but let's see. Oh, you know, and I also have, he says, what is your defensive weapon of choice? And, uh, I, you know, I just assumed that was when I was out in the mountains or whatever, but I do have some other weapons that, you know, I have a, I have a, I have a black mini 14, I know, and then I have some other things that, you know, 12 gauge shotgun for the house. That's perfect. Pump. Yeah. Do you invite any of the dogs to sleep in the tent? No. <laughs> no. I mean, and when I when I when I'm in my snow tracker tent, yes, I'll let them come in because it's big enough. But that little bitty backpacker's tent, no, I don't. I don't. They sleep right outside. I put my mani tarp down like a like a throw rug and then uh yeah they sleep right there those female dogs they don't leave they'll stay they all stay around there so were you near the gila cliff dwellings on this trip no i was on the other side of the wilderness on that trip how much food do you carry for the dogs assume they get their own water yeah and then i you know depending on where i'm going i'll pack some water if i'm just doing day rides out in the in the desert but and then you know when i'm packing in i carry enough dog food for depending on how long i'm going to stay uh, you know usually those old female dogs they don't need much they're three let's see three of them are spayed and an old a spayed uh female dog doesn't require much dog food you know she, they stay butterball fat on a cup and a half and of, of dog food and and so it doesn't take a whole lot and carry a, a you know i feed my dogs a high quality dog food i don't just carry I, I don't feed them junk you know let's see i carry a governor oh those are cool two holes with 410 4 and 45 there you go that'll work yeah because you can shoot 45s out of that governor i wish i could do that in that in that henry let's see here you go why in the world do you keep putting the strap over your mule's tail? How the heck is it supposed to poop? It does, believe me. Uh, I love the video. Enjoy seeing the countryside. Question, what do you do with the hounds at night? They sleep in the tent or tie them out away? I don't. Now, the male dogs, you have to tie them up. You can't. I couldn't. I couldn't just leave them loose. They would be gone. They'd be They'd be they go hunting without me, and uh, like I said, somewhere, uh, hopefully, they'd, you'd find them, and they, I leave the tracking collars on, all of them anyway. Now, these new Garmin tracking collars, the battery life on them is unbelievable, but uh, yeah, and then, you know, you think if they would be gone, you might get somewhere, and they'd have some up a tree, but I don't know. I, I've heard of some of the guys like that leave their dogs loose at night and then get up in the morning and go look for them with the old beep beep collars beep 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 and uh, they would have a bear treat or a lion do you always take feed the mules to go in the wilderness yes 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 sometimes yep like to know where you got that hat really cool i like it a lot what's the style that's just an old uh, it's a palm leaf hat you can get it on amazon it's uh I don't even know what style. It's got that little gus crease in the front. Biggest brim I can find because I am pigment impaired. I get sunburned really, really easy. And uh, you can see by all the little scars on me, the dermatologist loves to burn me. And he's dug a few things out of me here and there. But so, yeah, I stay covered up anymore. Another really cool video. Oh, but then I I switch off from that straw hat. I think it's what's the one? What's the holiday? You got Labor Day, and uh, Memorial Day, and then Cowboy Code says you're supposed to switch and start wearing a felt hat. Then, how long is the tracking battery life on the Garmin's new collar receivers? Emmett Henderson. Uh, I don't know, but you put them on. I. I just put them on two minute update and uh man i think they'll last like 40 hours or something like that or maybe 60 hours i looked it up one time i know it was a long time 
I have a question. Do you ever make corn dodgers to take along on the trail? No, but I looked up. Uh, what's that guy? He has a video channel. And uh, he had a recipe for corn dodgers. Oh, shoot. But I'm going to make some and take some with me sometime. I also got some videos I never shared with anybody. I got a big dehydrator that I bought from uh, from uh, uh, Cabela's. And I used to make a bunch of my own stuff. You know, you make like hamburger. You, they call it gravel. Dehydrate it. And then, you, you know, you can just rehydrate it back up instead of, you know, just to carry some lightweight meals with me. And that was years ago. I made a bunch of that stuff. I need to get it out and do it again. But I got these videos. and I used to make a lot of videos back then, back old, but they're terrible quality. General area where you at? I was up in the Gila Wilderness. Yeah, it's something to do with Labor Day. Arizona traditional Labor Day or Memorial Day. It's like the ladies are supposed to wear black and then change to white or something like that. I don't know. Getting over my head again. General area where you hunt. Ever consider a side job and taking people out on overnight rides? I've been asked a lot, and I've taken a few people. Hey, guitar maker. It's my buddy. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I had... The only thing I thought that I would do is if people were interested and they and they wanted to just have a camp back in the wilderness would be to pack their stuff in, you know, say put a GPS coordinate and 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 say, you know, this is where your camp is and load up all their stuff and 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 pack in their camp and let them walk to it. But I've never I don't know. I I've taken people with me, but most of the time they're just friends and, and they have their own mules and everything. So I just, I don't know. I, I think what bothers me about it, it's like guiding and outfitting. It would just, I'm, I'm afraid that it would take the fun out of it for me because there's a lot of pressure on you to produce. And, uh, you know, you got some guys there to, asking for, now, you know, trail rides would be a different story. But and then sometimes I'm worried about the kind of people you might get with you. And you get way out there in the woods and you don't like them. And I don't, that probably wouldn't be good. Brett, one question. Why don't you hobble the mule so they can graze? I was just wondering is all. I enjoy your videos very much. I usually do. I water them. Or I, if you, that last video that I put it, put put out uh you can see that i i i i i tied up jet by a front leg i got a little what do you call it a, a single hobble or whatever you call it uh and you long cotton rope and you tie him by a front leg and let him graze and i think jenny i don't i probably didn't even hobble her i just turned her loose but most of the time on that video I didn't get to camp until after dark, so I didn't want to hobble them and let them graze. And uh, I, I got to start getting under, getting to camp earlier in the day. I hate to set up camp after dark. I'd love to be able to get there earlier where I can get a fire built and, uh, you know, sit in the chair, you know, enjoy the evening, hobble the mules, let them graze and stuff. Now, I won't. I won't leave them hobbled all night. I, I don't know about Agnes, but you used to. Jet, if you hobbled him and you left him, he would leave you. Now, and I, I say he liked to be with me, but he always headed back up the trail thinking he had to get back to the truck. And uh, you'd have to go catch him and bring him back. So I, I tie him up at night. I line him. Let's see, Chris is here, antidote of a houndsman. If you guys like to watch videos, Chris has a, uh, has his own channel. Uh, he makes videos. He's supposed to be making more. I stay after him all the time to make more videos. 
Oh, if that man with the rocks wasn't your twin brother, I'll eat my hat. From your faces to your voices and even your hands looked identical. That was slick. Did he ride with you or is that just the property or already his place? Our hands look the same. Uh, that's the guy who gave me the Apache tears. Is Chris, Chris, I think his name is Chris also. No, Russell, Russell. He was camped up there. And, and then I think you probably need to get better glasses or something because I think your eyesight's off. He's not near as good looking as I am. I don't know. I think that's, that's kind of, I don't know. <laughs> By the way, what is that? You are always eating out know, of that thermos anyway, stew, whatever my wife packs me. Sometimes it's just scrambled eggs. Sometimes it's a stew. Sometimes it's beans and chili. Have you ever had any of your hounds snake bit? Yep. Yep, yep. They usually live through it, like I said. New viewer. Where are you, state? Southern New Mexico. Is that the Burro Mountains? No. I have hunted the Burro Mountains before. That wasn't them. Isn't there a vaccine out for dogs against rattlesnake bite? There is. And uh, I probably should get Booger. Booger's nine years old. P and probably those terrorists, Uno, Al, and uh, Timmy. I probably should get them vaccinated. I think it helps. And uh, they're older. They're getting some age on them. And uh, the younger dogs, I don't worry about it a whole lot. There's Chris, good time record. I would love to go on one, but I don't think Agnes could haul my wheelchair. <laughs> we could get a little buggy or a little. I got uh, Ruth is trained to drive, but I don't, I, I don't know how to do that. I've never done that. So you could do it something like that. We'd go on a ride. Emmett Henderson, I tried taking guys out, and it didn't work for me. They seem to always need to go home to girlfriend or wives before I'm ready, so I don't. That's right, Emmett. <laughs> Chuck Miller, I have several Mini 14. Isn't a Mini 30? Oh, that's cool. I also have a private gun range. I love all guns, even my 3030. Well, I know who I need to talk to when I need direction on guns now. Never had a dog die from a snake bite. Had one on the couch for about three weeks once. Sissy, like I said, Sissy's the only one, and I have had lots of dogs snake bit. How do you think good dogs from the colder parts of the West would do in the dry ground conditions you hunt? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think after they were here for a while and they're good dogs and they acclimated, maybe, you know, I think you can, I mean, I, it's just a different kind of hunting. I don't know. I, I I know I talk to a lot of old timers, old dry ground hunters, and and uh, they'll say, ah, oh, you know, uh, you gotta you gotta have some of these good, good old dry ground dogs from down here. But uh, then I talk to some other guys that say, well, yeah, we brought some dogs from. Matter of fact, I think it was Terrell Shelley said he brought some dogs from back east for somewhere. And now they might have brought them as pups. And they were raised up in this country, and they did good. So, I don't know. Where are you at? Where exactly are you at, Chuck? Next, how do you think good dogs? I bet Utah is deregulating all lion hunting, interest hunting out there. Man, I from what I hear, there is a ton of lion hunters in Utah. And I I don't, the only, the place I want to go is I want to go to Nevada. My little sister was on here earlier and she was asking me when I was going to be back. She lives in Nevada and I want to go up there into some of that country. That's another one of those trips I want to go on. I want to pack in to where uh, Claude Dallas's camp was. Uh, I don't know. I listened to that song that, uh, uh, oh, what you call it sings. Uh, can't remember his name right there. Uh, anyway, so I'd like to go see Claude Dallas's old camp up there. I drove mules on my grandpa's farm when I was a kid behind one. 
on oh wow oh wow that's cool tucson arizona there you go yeah i you know i don't know i the only thing i say is the same thing is no matter where you're hunting is try to get dogs from people that are in that area and have had success and i think you just increase your odds of getting good dogs ah that'd be cool huh chuck i want to go I, I don't know when i'm gonna go but i'm gonna go someday maybe this spring this coming spring uh i'm in henderson state of idaho has totally mismanaged idaho for bear and cats too many tags usually that's what what happens i guess okay dynamite your land or who's the riffraff now i have no idea what this guy's talking about oh uh, he was talking about that was that video i made about economic collapse and he's saying dynamite the road so nobody could get in that's what i had said right there Does the lever 410 have a choked barrel? No. Brett, great, interesting, good points on what you carry on personal and pack mule. Were you a boy, boy scout? No. I think you forgot refrigerator and stove. <laughs> Probably, uh, haha. Uh -huh. Is there a pot of a uh, portable weather radio you can carry for updates besides the app. You know, there probably is. I never really worried about it. Did you say booger man as in Bigfoot? Always keep an eye out for Bigfoot. I've never seen him. We could film a reenactment. <laughs> Yeah, we might have a hard time someone f playing the part of the game wardens. Idaho is only interested. Chuck, one of these days we need to talk. I, And maybe you have the same information I do. But I had a guy come out and tell me some pretty interesting stuff about that. And I, I've got this deal. I'll show you. Uh, I have a, a subscription to a historical newspaper thing where you can look up all these old newspaper clippings. And uh, let me see if I have this. Like Bobcat Carter. And I did a lot of research on that Claude Dallas deal and uh, and then I had some people talk to me from up there and uh, there might have been more to that story than everybody knows so I don't know it's just rumors anyway Emmett Henderson two bear two lion limits totally nuts we have two line limits down here. And, uh, of course, I think it was last year, year before last, was the first year they ever filled the quota in the, in the unit I hunt in. More questions. I can maybe riding mules and nothing. After days, at least have a couple of drop tail cameras. Where's it looks? No, no. Had hounds since 1983. Always wanted to hunt off of mules. Looks flat fun. Are they expensive? Uh, they are now. I used to think that. You should be able to buy a good riding mule all day long for $1,500. Now, you know, 
you'll probably get a decent one if you go to the right place for around four grand. And uh, really good ones run through the sale are bringing six, seven thousand dollars. And and shoot, the high selling mule at that sale they had up in northern New Mexico was eighteen thousand dollars. So as a guy I know sold that mule. So wow. I'm glad I own mine and don't have to go out and try to buy some. Claude Dallas was down in the Owahi, South Idaho, in the land the Spanish once had called the Northern Mystery, where rivers run and disappear, and uh, something still runs free. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. All right. Guys, what do you think? Any more questions? If you get a horse, get them off a ranch with a lot of rocky hills. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway, there's Chris. The price of feed, keep your eye open. There are a few people that will give those mules away. You know, C Carl Boykin, he has a couple, Chris, for sale that uh, he ran them through the sale up in northern New Mexico there. He PO'd them at 3500 I think. I think he wants 5000 for them. I don't know anything about them, but... But he, that's one of the reasons he said he's selling them is because of the cost of feed. Emmett Henderson, Basque country, yep. Those sheep herders. How do you think your old pack of staghounds would fare against an adult mountain lion? Big old Tom, you'd probably lose a dog or two. Just don't take a free mule named Claymore. <laughs> That's true. And at 1,000, a wolf is great when we were only supposed to have 300, and we could currently have 1,500. Oh, 1,500. Secondly, it's up to the hunter star. Eric, thanks, Brent. Onwards and upwards. Loving your channel. Thank you very much. I like doing it. I do. I always said I can't do anything creative. I can't. I can play a guitar just enough to irritate everybody, but I can I can play a video camera. <laughs> Arizona Trail. We appreciate you, Brad. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed rest of your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing here? Got to get to my chores. Perfect. Yeah, I'm about to shut this thing down. Enjoyed it. Give me a call when you get a chance. I will. I I I, uh, I called you today. I didn't leave a message. Okay, guys. I'll give you a sneak peek. Something. I bet they got her in a cave hole. I hate that. I wish they could just put her up on a big old rock. Let's go back right there. That's Rusty, Booger, Clara. Timmy, Al, and uh, that's all the that's the male dogs with exception of Clara. Clara is a spayed female, and her daddy is Booger. Help. Not enough there. Help. Get out! Booger! Jimmy, here we go! 
This was the next day, 20 hours old. And I'll show you something. That dog right there that's barking is P. She will straddle a track, but she will get you through places where the other dogs will quit. She's got a real cold home, and I figured this track was about 20 hours old and uh, but she's working the track kind of getting them through now boogers up there further up the hill and you'll hear him bark here in a minute but she's keeping all the dogs together looking I mean there there she is still now they go up and there there's booger he found it up there no, that's Al. Al found it up there. Booger's back in here. But that's Uno. So this, at the very least, is a 20-hour-old track. That's not too bad. But we're running out of time. It's going to get hot here in a little while. But look at, you can see how the intensity, even on the old cold track, I mean, the tails are wagging, they're looking, 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 working. That's what's fun. There's P, P right there. There's Uno. Now, this is what I figured is after, after we got to where that lion was laid up for the rest of that day. And this, I assumed, was an overnight track. Look at who's in front. Al's way out in front. They're not open. Way you can see Al right up there. He had to have spent the day in there, and then they finally, they found where he left last night. So right now, we're on an overnight track. Now right here, that's Apollo. He's a young dog. I think that's Bean. He's a young dog. The mother of the pups I have right now. Where is she? At? Oh, that's her right there. Bad spot. Really bad spot. There you go. Oh, I said I was going to give a water bottle away. The fourth yes I get in the comments they get a water bottle I never did get a super chat I forget about that there's one whoa there's two there's three there's four Doug Redden well Doug Redden guitar maker and Amondo Mata an antidote of a houndsman, my buddy Chris. You guys send me an email. Write this down. Brett 
Fawn, B R E T T V A U G H N, at iCloud.com. Put in the subject water bottle and send me your address. And let's see, Armando, guitar maker, Chris, I'll send you one anyway. Doug, there's Armando, he did it again. You already got one. Buckeye Backwoodsman. Yep. And then Eli. I'll give five of them away. There you go. I got a super chat too, so now I'm happy. <laughs> who was it? Send me a super chat. I got to see who it is. Because he gets one too. I'll run into him. He's my neighbor up here. Yeah, you get one too. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Let me know. If you want to do it again, I'll do it again. I'm kind of grounded for a little while. I can't get out. So, and I've got, you know, let me know if you guys that were here to watch those old videos. Do you kind of like that? Because I got tons of old video, but they're all real little clips, little bitty pieces of things that I filmed years ago. There's not really a story to them, but I can... I could figure out a way to use them on these live deals and kind of tell the story and then use the little chat at that time. I don't know. If you're interested, let me know. I can do that. Something anyway. I enjoy it. And then maybe I'll figure out a way to use some of those old videos. Let me see if there's another one I haven't used. Here you go. This one this one is not mine, but it'll make it'll make you want to go to the mountains. His name was Jeremiah Johnson. And they say he wanted to be a mountain man. Nobody knows whereabouts he come from and don't seem to matter much. He was a young man and ghosty stories about the tall hills didn't scare him none. Bought him a good horse and traps and other truck that went with being a mountain man and just said goodbye to whatever life was down there below. This is his story. Robert Redford as Jeremiah Johnson. Jeremiah Johnson made his way into the mountains. I, am I know who you are. You're the same dumb pilgrim I've been hearing for 20 <laughs> days and smelling for three. Betting on forgetting all the troubles that he knew. Take him. What? Take him. Ma'am, I wouldn't know how to tend after it. The trail was wide and narrow The eagle or the sparrow Showed the path he was to follow Are you all right? Sure, sure, I got a fine horse under me A mountain man's a lonely man And he leaves a lot behind How's the war going? Which war? It ought to have been different But you often times will find that story doesn't always go the way you had in mind. If you value your hair, you will get married. <laughs> Jeremiah's story was that kind. <laughs> he was a man the Indians prayed to and cursed and tried to kill. <laughs> He was tough. Jeremiah Johnson. Some say he's dead. Some say he never will be. Jeremiah's story. Now that makes you want to go to the mountains. We will. We're going to be live on the other channel tomorrow night. And the dote of the houndsman joins me, Chris. And uh, uh, George Lambert. 
John, uh, Uncle Johnny, Papa. I think that's how he does it. And then uh, Hound on the Run. Uh, so yeah, we do a little Monday Night Live where we all sit around and we discuss things and mainly about hunting and stuff and hounds and different things. So uh, good, guys. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. We'll get together again. I'll let you know. I'll always make a notification. Send the emails. There you go. Thanks, guys. Onward and upward. <laughs>